realities are, are for people that have felt that struggle, felt that stuckness, and are actually looking to drop deeper with awareness into their nervous system, into their emotional body, and actually begin to repair traumas, could be little traumas, big traumas that have occurred through their lifetime that they just weren't aware of. And these are the things that are um, basically creating everything in your life from your job to the relationships that you have, to where you live, to even the clothes that you wear and the car that you drive are all a, an aspect of what's happening inside, right? Mm -hmm. Like the inside, if you've ever heard Michael Singler's work, he talks about um, that there's all these things that are happening inside that when something from the outside world hits that part inside, you're going to have a response. And so the inside parts, the parts that are hurt, the parts that have been abandoned, the parts that feel angry, the parts that feel uh, sad or desperate or unseen or unheard, those are the parts that are actually creating your holographic reality. And we've built our world in a way where we're always, like the mind is always trying to protect us from having those things get hit. And so if you think like that's a pretty limiting life, if the entire aspect of your life has been programmed to actually protect yourself from being hurt or feeling that wounding again. And when we can let that go, which is the practices that, that we take people through, um, you just basically begin to bring more life force into mm -hmm. your body. And that life force brings new intuition, new confidence, um, new connection, like the ability to connect with someone deeper. So Take it from me as someone who I thought I would connect with people very easily. I never realized that I wasn't actually letting people in. Like there was this surface connection, but I never knew that there was a deeper level that I can actually connect to someone. Um, so those are just some of the things that we, um, that we work with. And yeah, we're, uh, let me see. I think she wrote something crazy this morning. I asked for guidance. <laughs> there was a noise here where I'm at and my dog started barking. So I said, if you're a bad thing, go away. But if you're good and here to guide me, then you are welcome. And you guys pop up. Wow. <laughs> you just can't make that shit up. Wow. That's amazing, Rebecca. Yeah. Wow. That's <laughs> wow. It's got chills as I, as I read that. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I don't know how this work and how this energy finds people. I know for a fact that there's no accidents. Like I, I know that this work is just a transmission and it's not, it's I, I, what I want to offer you. It's not even that guy or I are the guides. It's like when the soul is wanting to connect to its higher self, like the higher connection, the higher state of being. Um, what we've curated here is, is a container, if you will, that allows people to walk into and connect deeply to their own truth, to their own guidance system. Um, so that you're not reliant on someone or a coach or a process to, to create your own healing. Like you can do that for yourself. Yes, it takes learning some new things. Yes, it takes doing consistent practices. Yes, to all of those. And like you will tap into your higher self and your own wisdom and your own truth. So welcome. Welcome to our amazing uh, Satori Prime family and the old souls and seekers community. Yeah, and I'm just putting this uh, little link in here for you guys. For those of you guys, so like we're going to talk about a particular part of the field today and how to establish this within your body, maybe even do a little drop in to give you guys a taster. But if, for those of you guys who really want to know the type of work that we're doing here, uh, I just dropped the link in the group soulsandseekers.com forward slash messenger. What we do is you can go into, uh, let me take myself off the little box. Uh, what we, what you can do is I'm in the little box. How did I get into this? Little box? I'm in a glass of emotion. Um, if you really want to know what we do here, there's a two part demonstration that I do. One is for uh, mindset and one is for the energetic body. And I show you how to go into the subtle witness of the mind and the subtle witness of the body. And this is the beginning of you being able to basically disidentify with patterns, strategies, trauma, you know, all these things that people struggle with is that they are deeply identified with these parts of themselves. 
And so somebody, um, Alicia just said, you know, it's like trying to read the instructions um, from inside the jar. That's so true, right? Like, what a great metaphor. Um, it's like the, the, the subject that's experiencing the trauma can't be the subject that undoes the trauma. You're too close to it. You have to create an objective witness. And that's what Elon was pointing to with Michael Singer, Singer's work. He calls it the seat of awareness. And for a lot of people, um, they think finding the seat of awareness is the end game when it really is just where the game begins. And so we just had a, uh, an incredible two day. We do these uh, two day immersive experiences that we call the intuitive mind, AKA the intuitive heart experience. Um, and, you know, in those 10 hours or 12 hours that we invest with people for most people, it's a completely novel experience. Like they literally have no clue that their physiology, biology and awareness can do these things. And so when we start pointing at it, that's really all Elon and I do. And that's why we always say we're not doing the healing. What we're, what we're doing is what our teachers have done for us. Our teachers have brought us to different states of consciousness, right? Any human can do this, by the way, it's not as hard as you think. And then when you get there, what you need is a teacher who's been before you to point at different qualities of that awareness because it's very subtle. And then you start noticing and mapping your own awareness and consciousness. And once you start doing that, you start looking at what are the actual practical applications of doing this? Because for most of us, when we think about healing, we think like going to therapy. Someone mentioned IFS, great therapy. We know a lot of IFS practitioners um, and the IFS practitioners that we know most of them get an insane amount of value and become such better practitioners when they understand how energy and awareness works. It's actually extremely limiting to only do talk therapy because you're really only dealing with one aspect of the mind. And we and I, I dropped this line in there. Uh, I'll paraphrase because I, I never remember the exact quote, but Einstein is quoted saying, you cannot solve problems with the level of mind that created it. That's another way of saying the subject that's experiencing the problem can't be the subject that creates the solution. And so if you go up to your mind to gain more information and more insight, all you're doing is feeding that same subject more information. And it will, in a weird way, almost use it against you, right? You'll have a breakthrough and then it'll like, it'll use it to stay in pattern. And it's very, very sneaky how this stuff works. Some patterns are so sneaky. They're so subver uh, subversive and they really hide. And that's like the tricky part about this whole thing. It's like we're subconsciously doing the thing creating the life and at the same time being convinced that everything is happening to us. And so the reason we want to do mindfulness practices, awareness, meditation, A, is to understand how this, this mechanics work. How is it that we're manifesting the experiences, life, relationships, health, money that we have in our lives? And then how do we actually rearrange the internal world, not the external world, the internal world, so that the external world that we are living in or so we imagine that we're living in is a reflection of that inner health. If you're not healthy inside, it's not healthy outside. If you're, if you're fearful inside, you have a fearful outside. That's just how it works. And so the last few thousand years, a little scratch of time in human history, we've been extremely externally focused trying to solve all the world's problems by having everyone agree on everything, agree on thoughts, agree on emotions, you know, agree on how things should be done. And I don't know about you guys. You can, I wish I can ask you by show of hands, like, how is that going? Not so good, huh? Right, Pretty violent. So we're never going to get there. You're never going to have 8 billion people or countries or civilizations or societies fully in agreement with anything. And the reason for that is when we try to do this from the mind, we miss the whole point of what actually connects every human being on the planet and what connects every be human being and every piece of consciousness and every living and sentient entity in this galaxy and universe is the one awareness that we can all tap into. And so we want to train ourselves to tap into that one awareness. Because when you do that, that's like, it's like we're all computer terminals and nobody's taught those computer terminals how to connect to the internet yet. So we're not connected to the entire data stream. We're not connected to anything. And all we have is our little mind with our little thoughts, which was conditioned by society, by authority figures, by your caregivers, by school, by a lot of stuff that has created impressions on you. And not only impressions, but has compressed you into an extremely narrow way of living your life. Most people that we have met, again, we've coached tens of thousands of people. I can only speak from our ontological experience is people don't feel safe. People have an experience of well-being. They're not experiencing authentic connection in their lives. They feel lacking purpose. They're generally bored and not really sure why that is. And I'll say this for that. Again, if you're disconnected from the primary source 
from which everything comes from, of course you feel lonely in this world. You know, what we, we just did the event, like I mentioned, and, and one of the things I mentioned multiple times to people at the event is if you learn this, you'll never be bored again. You'll never have a boring moment ever again. Because when you look at the world within and you, and you realize that universes are being born in your system, you are literally the most beautiful video game you will ever experience. And it's all inside of you. So you won't stand on lines and look at your cell phone and you won't go to a park bench and not notice the trees because you'll notice that everything out here is really just a reflection of everything in here. And so we want to really develop the inner view. We really want to be able to like, how do we get there? How do we get into higher states of consciousness? Which is really just to say, how do we get outside of subject conditioned thinking and go into a place where we can look at ourselves objectively at what's going on in our body objectively. And again, it's very subtle. It's very subtle energy inside the system. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a, of a clue on, on what this all looks like. But like I said, if you click on that uh, soulsandseeker.com forward slash messenger link, uh, you're going to go through a two-part demonstration and an experimentation where I show you and explain to you the, the spiritual science as well as the science science behind this, like how this downregulates the nervous system, why it repairs attachment systems, how you can co-regulate with your system and other systems. And this is what creates healing for people. Healing is not an idea. It's a felt sense. Safety is not an idea. It's a felt sense. Connection, not an idea. It's a felt sense. Love, it's not an idea. It's a felt sense. You can put language to it if you try. And we have with thousands of songs and poems and stuff, but we all know when you're in love, describe that to me. It's insanity. Yeah. It's so multidimensional. It's so deep and rich that the moment you put language to it, you actually take away from your real experience. Then you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm in love, I guess. You know, like, and it, it could be so much more than that. So let's turn the page here and talk about grounding. And so grounding, you'll, you'll immediately think of the ground, right? Like there's the ground. Am I grounded? However, like, by a show of hands, and you could do that by just saying I in the chat box, tell me whether you are one of these people or whether you enjoy being around quote unquote grounded people. Is that true or not true? Is being around grounded people a good feeling for you? True or not true? You could just say true or not true in the box. By the way, just, just when we we're talking about grounding, uh, just so we're clear, uh, there's grounding mats, which I'm standing on right, right now. That's not the grounding that we're talking about, right? There, there's definitely some, some science to that as well. The grounding that we are talking about is this, uh, when guys saying like people that you love to be around or, right, it's, it's this energy. They're the ones who tend to be slower. They're the ones that tend to feel like when you're around them, they're just like holding and embracing you just as you are. Like there's no way that you need to be around them. There's just this very um, beautiful, stable energy that when you're there and they're like, they can even put their hand just gently on you and you can feel your body kind of begin to slow down. And if you're, for those of us that live here and like, ah, right, like you can kind of sit with someone and you just feel your entire nervous system just <sighs> melt and relax. And you're like, oh, so I just wanted to name that that's, that's grounding. And, and why don't you guys just name a few characteristics of when you're around somebody that feels grounded like what's the word that comes to mind like for me it's safety when i'm around the grounded person i feel very safe i feel held mm -hmm. um what are your words for for ground for grounded and for some of you guys like the experience of being grounded you may have literally never had it yeah it, right? it's very likely that you've never had it yeah Right. Well, we all have that friend that we go to for like solace. Yeah. Someone saying uh, peace, calm, support, unconditional love. Those are beautiful answers. A few more, perhaps. God is present. Yep. Boom, ba. Anybody else want to share? So 
Yeah, peaceful. So look, unconditional love, peace, calm, support. God is present. So peaceful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Rebecca's like, right now I feel like she's after a sugar rush out of nowhere just watching you guys. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm in a sugar rush right now. I had some fat balls my wife made. I think they had something in them. Um, balance, harmony, enveloped. I feel calm. So like take all those words and instead, yeah, stillness. So again, I'm going to read them, but this time as I read them, instead of listening to the word, feel the impact of the word. And I'll say them slower. Okay, so like, okay, let's do it this way. So bring your awareness into your body, okay? And you want to bring it as low as you can. So if you know where the perineum is, that's the uh, right at the tail of the spinal cord, right? So bring your awareness down to the perineum, root chakra. And and see again if as you start as we start bringing awareness there especially doing it together if you can start feeling a qualitative shift in your thoughts and the way that you feel and I'll name these things that people are creating here so we have unconditional love so feeling unconditional love as we experience our the ground peace calm supported so peace, calm, and supported as your awareness is in your root. God is present. God being present while you're in your root. And God could be interchangeable with universe or multidimensional energy or the one source, whatever, whatever suits you. If God is a triggering word, that's understandable. Peaceful, experiencing peaceful while you're in your root. Balance and harmony. Stillness. Completely connected. Safe to be seen and held. Fulfilled. Melissa's having an experience. <laughs> Yeah. And so we're doing an experiment now, whether you know it or not. We're actively choosing to move the location of our awareness. Wow. Melissa said, I feel the Holy Spirit right now. That's beautiful. Good for you. Yes. And that there's something to what you're saying, by the way, even if the terminology might be different for somebody else. Yes. Right. Yeah, and you can just sit in it. Just enjoy that. Yeah, there you go. And you can feel the streaming down the spinal cord now for some of you guys coming from the back of the neck down the spine. And just notice we're pointing at subtle energy in the body. That's all we're doing here. This is how we learn. This is how we teach. You just point. Carl saying almost like an uplifting, I think an uplifting of the soul. Yeah. Where two or more are gathered. I love that. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I also want to name that when we're in a group collective and everyone's located, like moving their awareness and locating it deep in the system into the, the root chakra, it's more easily accessible for everybody. We create a more cohesive field. It's like uh, if 28 people are pushing a car up, the, up a hill, it's a lot easier to move the car than one person doing it. We're setting grooves, energetic grooves together. So easier to find in a group for sure. That's why we do um, intensive events in, in group formats. So the energy is easier to find for people. So a few, a few of you guys just name, what did you notice in the shift as we went from what we call a conditioned, local, ordinary mind? And even if just a part of you was able to slip down and find that root, there was some subtle and very qualitative changes and if we actually can go much much deeper into this experience 
and it's going to start feeling um, rather difficult to speak from there. Very slow, primordial, very expansive, dark, like 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 a full space. Because if we go out, if we went to a more spacious uh, awareness, we would feel the depth of it, the infinite nature of it, but it would be empty. When we go down to the ground, we have the expansiveness, but it's full. And not only is this energy within your body grounding, it's extraordinarily healing. Uh, if you go to any good somatic practitioner, like a physical healer, generally speaking, they buy you know, they end up there because they have a ton of ground. And if they do hands-on work, they're, you know, you want to find grounded people who do hands-on work. It's very powerful to work with them. Yeah. So what did you guys notice? Just in that little, little bit right there. We want to learn from our direct experience. We don't want to learn by someone speaking at you all the time. What are you noticing in your experience? Yeah. What are and and I was going to say, and something also to point out is we've all read books that point to these experiences, right? Because the author is trying to transmit and actually share from that place. Someone told me the finger pointing at the moon is not the moon. And so we want to get that all these books that we have been digesting, all these things that we're um, seeking out there, right. For, for these answers, they never bring you into the physical experience. How many of you guys noticed that we just did that for, it was maybe five minutes. How many of you guys notice, like, like when someone like Melissa is saying that she's feeling, uh, what was it? The Holy, the Holy spirit, it, like, mm -hmm. right. Like there's, there's, the experience of that. And then there's someone writing in a book about the, the Holy spirit, right? So just how many of you guys can get that there's something very different here when you're actually in the experience. And now as guys asking you to just name what your experience is, I just want to offer that there is no wrong experience. Mm -hmm. Whatever you are sensing, whatever you've sensed, whatever you just experienced as you give it language, right? It's like you pointing to the moon. It's not the thing. It does, however, create a new paradigm for yourself of like, oh, wow, that's what well-being feels like. Or that's what safety feels like. Or that's what connection feels like. So it's very important when you have the experiences to actually begin to notice internally and go, how is this different than what I'm like what's new about this experience? Yeah. So yeah, we're, we're just going to keep pointing here. Okay. And, and so generally we think of it as a, as a thought phenomenon and it's not what we need to, what we get to realize is that you have portals in, inside of your body, so to speak, right? Like doorways, if that, if that language works better for you. And these are all energetic centers in the body. Now I'm not making this up. This stuff has been around for thousands of years, right? And so we do have a portal uh, in the third eye. We do have a portal up here for crowns. Some of you guys probably feel very floaty in your lives, like you're almost floating around your body. And that points to uh, a really early trauma in your life, perhaps even at birth, that the consciousness, the awareness has never fully claimed the body. And I'm guessing if you feel that way, your body, your body probably looks rather frail. You probably have a really thin frame, probably tall and thin. Because the what happens for people who don't claim the body all the way is that the energy doesn't go in, and so the body doesn't get full, and so the person kind of like lives out here, and generally speaking, will kind of have this look in their eyes a little bit, like a little hollow. They're not quite all the way there, and it's because they're really not all the way there. And so, uh, one how we can repair this for that person is by creating ground. They actually need an anchor. These are highly sensitive people, highly, highly sensitive people that can feel everything that's going on, but it's chaotic for them. It's like a kite flying in the wind, right? And it doesn't matter what your patterns are. And we say this and we're not laughing, we're not joking when we say this. If Elon and I walk into a room with roughly 80 to 90% accuracy, we can tell you what people's underlying psychology is simply by looking at the shape of their body. 
Because when you study this and you start, study character styles, you start recognizing and realizing that the mind is actually shaping the way the energy moves in the body. And so trauma is where energy gets stuck. And so some parts of the body get full, some parts stay lean, and there's different shapes to this. And that points to how energy is moving in the body and that tells you what patterns they're running. And so something that we've learned uh, in our many years of doing this is that there is, is <laughs> it is impossible to not get benefit from developing more ground and resource in your body. And it doesn't matter what pattern you run, it's going to support in opening up a whole, a whole bunch of new pathways for you in terms of your as lived experience and how you're experiencing your inner world, which is going to majorly reflect your outer world. Right. So um, if you guys are like starting to get a sense of this, right, because, again, we can point at it. We can only tell you what it feels like to start developing more ground in your system. And one of the things that we offer everybody here when they sign in now, and if you don't have it yet, feel free to uh, scan this QR code. Uh, not that one, hold on. Is our 28 day meditation challenge. It's free, please take advantage of it. We want you guys to, to have these tools. And uh, I think it's either week two or three in that challenge, Elon does a meditation that we call ground to God, which is another way of saying of crown to root, right? And really like, how do you take all this energy and start giving it an anchor point and this resiliency that you can build in the system. And this is the trust that we get to build inside of our, our systems and how things unfold in our lives. And we can't really do that when we're not feeling grounded and look around the planet. It's not a very grounded society right now. It feels chaotic and like things are out of control and all that kind of stuff. So these meditations are not just hey, sit here and quiet your mind. Please don't try to quiet your mind. No, do not do that. Please don't try to quiet your mind. I don't know how many times we can say that. Please don't try to quiet your mind. Your mind does not want to be quiet. It is not the function of your mind to be quiet. It is concerned with your safety and well-being. And, you know, if you've been around our training for a while, you know that what what's really going on with an active mind is that inside the body, there are points of tension and stuck energy. That's what trauma is. Trauma is just energy that's not moving in your body. It's an emotion, right? But it's an emotion, energy and motion. When that, when that energy can't move, that's what trauma is. And the mind senses that tension and is watching your active conditioned mind. And through its conditioning, it's trying to figure out what's going on down there through the filters of its conditioning. I don't like this. This doesn't feel good. Let me do something about it. And then like frenetic action in the world. We're all guilty of this, by the way. I still do this sometimes. Because it's desperately trying to create safety in the system. It's desperate to do that. But it, it only has one program to run. It doesn't know how to do it. It's the same program you've had since you were a little boy or a little girl. And so the work is not about understanding why that's happening, although novel and interesting and it will make you sound smart. It's really about how do I get the energy to move in my body again? And we call that metabolizing energy. You actually metabolize the energy that's stuck. It releases from the body. And as a byproduct of that energy being moved and released from your body, the mind can calm down because it has nothing to react to. And now you go from being a reactive human being to a responsive human being. And a responsive human being can be a responsible human being, which means an ability to respond. And so now you have things happening in your life and instead of overreacting every time it happens, oh, you kind of have the sense like, oh, that's interesting, that's happening. Hmm. Let me witness, let me not meddle, let me watch. Let me absorb this energy. Let me metabolize it. Ah, healing, learning. And it's like every experience in your life is another opportunity to heal. Life is not trying to hurt you. Your mind is not trying to hurt you. This whole system is built around a focus of love, right? This is the fundamentals of every teaching is that God is love. So everything is born from love. So anything that we're seeing that's not love is not that. That's the illusion of our mind projecting some part that's worried and afraid and scared and projecting that this is not that but that's not the case. So if you start re really recognizing this, it's like, hey, this is just a sensation in my body. Certainly might feel uncomfortable, but that's because you've been trained to perceive, as a, perceive it as discomfort. And you can retrain, like if you got trained for things to be uncomfortable, scary, scarce, you know, sad, grieving, why would you think you couldn't retrain yourself some other way? This last year, for an example, like we all tie our shoes the same way, right? Remember the you make the bunny ears and you go around the tree or whatever it was that they did in Full House. 
this last year, I retrained myself to tie my shoes a completely different way. Like I, I did it the other way because I watched a TED talk where the guy showed that and I realized that we're all tying our shoes wrong and that's why it comes undone all the time and doesn't have like an even bow. And if you do it the other way, you get an even bow that never comes apart. And I'm a Virgo, so I like everything even and organized. So it makes sense to me. But but I it took me months, months, because after 39 years of tying my shoes one way, my hands always want to do that. Always. That's what they know. So I would pick it up and I would have to slowly, oh, yeah, no, this way and then do it this way. And now it's like, you know, close to a year later, it's automatic. Now I tie my shoes the right way. Haha. Uh -huh. So in the same way, all it is is repetition. Repetitions, noticing. Repetition, noticing. We call this glimpse practices. So right now, today, with what we did, this short little demonstration, you guys got what we call a glimpse. When I drop my awareness to my root, I want to notice if something changes. So let's do it again. I want you to come here. Boof, boof. Like, come into the mind. Rawr. Elon likes that I've been using the word crunchy a lot. So come into your crunchy mind. And just feel the density of the mind. Feel the constriction of the mind. And feel the impact on your body. If you go deeper into the mind, it's like, oh, God. It is a rocky landscape in there. Okay. So now release yourself from the mind. Actively participate in your awareness. Choose to move awareness down towards the root. So coming all the way down the spine, you can go nice and slow if you want to. Let's do it together. I'm going to drop my hands as we go to just kind of help the energy and point to the systems. Go all the way down to the root, to the perineum. If your arms or legs are crossed, uncross them, please. There you go. You're finding it. There you go. Ooh, ah, sha. There you go, right there. Right where you are is perfect right now. Feel that. Relax the back of the eyes, let the jaw go. Notice if there's tension anywhere else that you might be able to release down to the chair or couch or whatever you're sitting in. Just get that support. Feel the support. Notice support. And again, you tell me if in your experience you are noticing a shift in kind of the way the mind feels, the way the body feels. And as we ground, certainly things may come up in the system like a ten tension in the heart or solar plexus. And actually the first and the fifth chakras are connected. So a lot of people, when they hit ground, often start feeling tightness in their throat as well because of the trauma around this um, system is feeling like you can't speak, like your voice got taken away from you or that it was, or might feel like it was scary to say what you needed to say for fear of repercussions. Mm-hmm. And so what we're watching as we get into awareness is what's unfolding. Well, we're just being in the witness of, we're not delegating, we're not manipulating, we're not trying to change, we're not trying to fix. And I want you guys to like realize this, if you've done no meditation at all your entire life, were you able to, just like that, choose to become aware and move your awareness down into this lower chakra system? Could you do that? My guess is you could very easily, very naturally, you probably weren't even thinking about doing it. You just kind of did it. And that's kind of the point that we always like to point at is that this stuff is innate for a human being. So we don't actually have to teach human beings how to use their awareness. We just have to make them aware that they have some. Because the moment you start pointing at awareness, a human being goes, oh, that's what that is. But there's an actual biological effect and depending on how and where we place awareness, that you can start experiencing different qualities of mind. 
Yeah, so Darlene says, my mind immediately felt light when I moved to town, right? The density moves away. The quality of the mind is dense. Agitation. Pissed off. Right, wrong. Yes, no. And or. I'm right, they're wrong. That That's the quality of this mind. Again, this is in the nomenclature of spirituality, a local mind, ordinary mind, conditioned mind. Think about that. This is your mind that's been conditioned. So most people are trying to do personal development work and through sheer willpower and force, trying to rehabituate conditioning. Doesn't work, not from up there anyway. Because how many of you guys want to transform your life? Like, you know, in some way, shape or form, whether it's your relationships, your business, your health, like you're like, I'm adamant. I know I want something to change, but I feel stuck. I'm sabotaging myself or it feels like circumstances are sabotaging me. How many of you guys are living in that world? And you got to be honest, true or false, yes or no. Darlene, hands up. Yeah, Alicia, hands up. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? And look, it's no shame in naming that. We're all struggling in some way. Yes, absolution, fill it way less cool. Everybody's there, guys. I don't care whether you're rich, you're poor, you're on your own, you have a family of 17, like everybody, it's not the circumstances, it's like what's happening internally that you really care about. Like even if you go buy something in the physical world, you you consume, right? People consume like crazy. They're trying to pacify an experience within. And nothing will do that. No amount of money, no amount of like some, you know, I've certainly had the experience. I have a lot of friends, but I feel very lonely regardless. Like it's because it's not what's out here. It's an internal experience. And so what we get to rehabituate is not wrangling the mind, is not doing that. Because the more you try to do that, the more your mind digs in. It gets more defensive. Yeah, It's telling a little kid that it's not doing its job the right way or telling somebody else that it's not doing its job the right way. The mind is like, oh, yeah, I'll show you, hmm. you know. And the other way is, again, noticing that the, what the mind is really doing is watching and reacting to what's inside the system. So you might as well go to the root source and learn how to work with the internals. And then as a byproduct of doing that work, the mind pacifies. The mind gets focused. The mind becomes aware. It becomes sharp. And again, I want to point to it. It's the byproduct. If you go into meditation or these practices going, I'm going to be here to quiet my mind. <clears throat> The mind is going to do the exact opposite. It's going to be like, oh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, I remember when they did that. I remember when you did this. I don't like that. This is not good. Uh, fuck society. Yeah, no, no, no. Right? Like all that kind of stuff. Broski, what do you want to bring through about this? Uh, I just really love people's comments and shares. And I love that you guys are able to tap into this frequency. This is my favorite. Um guys and my system are very fiery. Um, we tend to be very up here and out here. Like that was kind of the, the, the protection, right? Like wounded heart, etc. And so for me, as I began to do this work, there was a block because the heart was so blocked. I lived basically up here. when I began to do this work and someone's like, feel your feet or feel the ground. I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't even feel the lower half of my body. It was just, it was stuck like at the solar plexus, it kind of stopped. And so what I did was I started to do grounding meditations and grounding practices. And I have to tell you in the beginning, I couldn't connect to any of them. Hmm. I was like, I don't understand. I, you know, I would either like pass out during the meditation or just couldn't connect with it at all. And I want to share with you something that's been a, a profound shift for me. I'm clear. And, and this, this past weekend at our live event, um, there was a woman that brought something through that was really like, it really hit home. I think not only for me, but for, for everyone in the, in the program this weekend, you know, I took on a challenge during COVID to learn how to do a handstand. And I watched YouTube videos where people were like, how to do a handstand in 30 days. And I'm, I'm physically fit. Like I'm capable. I was like, Oh, that sounds like a fun thing to do. 
And I did it every day for 30 days. And other than like having very hurt wrists, I, I didn't get much closer to being able to do a handstand. I could do it leaning against the wall and whatnot. And this, she, she happens to be, um, she's from the circus and a contortionist and, and trains people and all this stuff. And she said at the event that it takes about four years to be able to master handstands. And I thought to myself, I was like, oh, well, if I knew that it took four years to master handstands and I didn't get it at 30 days in, I most likely wouldn't have given up. I would have been like, oh, well, I signed up for like this four year thing and I'm just going to give myself patience and grace. And if I do it before four years, great. And like, otherwise that's what it is. Right. And so with the grounding meditations or any practice that I do, that's kind of where I'm at. If someone that I trust offers something to me and says, hey, I think this would be really useful for you. I never do that thing for a certain result. Never. I don't read the book for a certain result. I don't uh, do the practice for a certain result. I am committed because I'm committed to the constant evolution of myself. I'm just committed to the practice. And if it's coming from someone that I trust dearly, who I know has my best intentions at heart, that I simply will go through the practice. And you know what happened with grounding practices? I started doing things like Qigong and Qigong is very like a grounding, uh, like ability to feel connected to the earth. Um, I began doing horse dance, which is kind of like a Qigong thing, but also like really connecting to ground and earth. I started doing meditations, lying down on my back on the earth. I started following certain practitioners and, and doing their meditations. And I just kept doing all of these things. And what I noticed is that the grounding energy, if you're talking about the, the chakra system, right? So basically from the crown all the way down to the root. And so grounding is really from the root. So it's top, I mean, bottom up instead of top down, it's bottom up. And what I noticed is all of the other chakras and all the parts of my center channel, which to use guys word were crunchy or locked up or tense or contracted or blocked began on their own, not with my intention or agenda. I wasn't like, okay, bring the energy to my solar plexus and open it. They just began to open on their own and all these incredible gifts that I didn't even know I had began to show up in my, in my life. And so now it doesn't matter who I work with and it doesn't matter what their system is. I'm like, practice grounding, practice this deep, deep connection to earth because it will awaken every other thing. It will dissolve all these blockages and you won't have to do anything on your own anymore. And whenever you feel like, how many guys through this process noticed that there's this hyperactive aspect of you and that when we dropped in and actually began to point to the grounding, that this became a lot quieter? Just say I in the comments. How many of you guys noticed that time, the, the experience of time slowed down? when we were able to tap into this energy. Now you tell me, if you're going out into your real world and you're dealing with kids, stresses at work with your boss, stresses at home with your partner, you're telling me if you were able to drop into this state on a whim, you're like, hey, going into this stressful situation, boom. And you're just able to connect to that place deeply. You're telling me that your life wouldn't be better. Like just try to bring a problem that you have when you're deep in the state and see how it lands. Explain, explain why, why there's resolution there for people. Why, why does going into states create that change? Uh, we'll say what you want to say. Cause I, I might take it in a different direction. 
I just mean about, you know, so, so, so generally speaking, again, what we want to consider, at least consider, is that, that you're getting your perfect experience based on the energy that you're outputting, okay? So like just to name it, right? If you're worried all the time, have you noticed that there's a lot more circumstances to worry about? Like the circumstances around you seem to be full of worry. If you have money scarcity, did you notice that money becomes additionally more scarce? It doesn't like, it's not like you suddenly make more money because you're like, oh, I'm scarce in money. And like, now there's more money. If you're lonely, don't you find more things to be lonely about or circumstances that make you feel lonely, right? And so I'm pointing at this or, or the opposite way, if you're like kind of in the flow state, you're beaming, everyone seems to be nice to you, smiling at you, the road, everyone's driving nice on the road. But in the mornings where you're like upset, you got to go really quickly. I don't know about you guys. If, I, if I'm in a rush, everyone on the road is driving slow, Always. right? Yep. So you're having like the opposite experience, right? Because what, what is happening is the circumstances are creating more of that. So we can say it's like a boomerang. Energy begets the energy that it's being created from. And so again, if you're trying to solve problems from a mind that's worried, scarce, angry, grieving, sad, you get more of that. Now, there's nothing wrong with those experiences. We just need to metabolize those experiences, not be at war with those experiences. And mostly what people are, they're like in trench warfare with their parts. Said so another way, you're in trench warfare with this stuck energy, with these traumatized parts. And, be, and it's because the way we experience it is as discomfort in our body. And so we have conditioned and trained our minds that when we feel discomfort, look in the opposite direction, look away, avoid, do your, you know, eat some food, watch TV, look at social media, like everything to avoid. And you're bypassing your experience. You're not there with your experience. If you're feeling sad, that's your experience. If you're feeling elated, that's your experience. If you're feeling worried, that's your experience. And again, it's all being sourced from one thing. And so it doesn't change. And that's why when we shift into these other levels of consciousness what begins to happen is instead of working on our circumstances we work on the frequency inside the body we can prove today scientifically that what's coming out of your heart is an electromagnetic wave the thoughts that whatever how you ever you want to measure those are being carried on those waves and that wave is then coming back at you so what you put out is what you get right it's like uh, Gandhi's line, be the change you want to see in the world. He's literally saying that from an internal place. So when we go into these other states, what happens is the system can reconfigure and reorganize to a different frequency. So not spiritual words. This is now science. This is science-backed stuff. And when you change the frequency that you are, you emanate that into this organic hologram that we call a reality, and it reflects that to you. So if you want to experience safer circumstances, you get to experience more safety first. Then you'll experience more safe circumstances. If you want to experience more abundance, again, it's not an idea. It's a felt sense. You actually have to open up your pathways of support inside your body to receive more abundance. And then you'll see the circumstances align for that. Time and time again, time and time again. And when it's not flowing, it's because you're not flowing. You're constricting, you're holding, you're constrained, you're like this. And so what we want to learn is how to sit with that, to open the system back up. And so most people are walking around with very, very, what we call defended systems, what we call identity, ego, personality. That's just another way of saying that's my armor. That's how I defend myself in this world. And you had to do that intelligently. You had to do that. And there's another way that was based on ignorance that you did that. Not your fault and ignorance because society is walking around ignorant right now. So this is the opportunity of this work is to release yourself of the ignorance. And it's just, it's an energetic experience. We're using word language here, but it's an energetic experience. And it is directly felt, it is directly experienced. People who came to this past weekend, trust me, that was their experience. And this is why it's like, oh my God, here it is. Here's what I've been looking for. Here's the pathway to get out of these trappings. Here's how I can pacify and focus my mind. Here is how I can start feeling authentic connection again. Here's how I can start building this, extreme confidence inside of my body, which is not based on overcompensation, but is based on my ability to know that whatever unfolds in my life and whatever circumstances come into my life, I now have a view that allows for me to sit with that full stop. Like I'm confident no matter what happens, I'm good. I can sit with it. I'm no longer concerned about that. What if you can live a life where you were not concerned what was coming down the pipe anymore? You weren't constantly waiting for the other shoe to fall. 
You weren't worried that this, that, or the other was going to happen. You just have built the capacity to know you could be with anything. And when you get really triggered, you immediately know what practices to put into place and how to get support from others to help your nervous system co-regulate and heal that every single time. So no matter, again, even if it feels traumatic as it's coming in, you're like, yes, let's go. I can heal. Like that's what it's about. And so I'll say this because we're, we're running out of time here. No trauma happened on its own. You were never by yourself when trauma happened. There is certainly things you do to yourself internally as this conditioning comes online, but it comes in self. So we call it self to self practices, self to other and other to self practices and self to group and group to self. You experience trauma, not independently. Humans are biologically built for connection. And so the reason we have a community here, we have a giant global community of hundreds of people all together supporting each other who are aware of this work now that understand that when they're in their pattern, they actually need to reach their hand out and say, hey, can someone sit with me? This needs to be seen. This needs to be presence. Just the same way when you're a kid and you wanted a caregiver or mom and dad to be with you when you're experiencing stress and trauma and, and hurt so that you can regulate your nervous system. That's what you really wanted from mom and dad. And mom and dad systems were probably not regulated. So you picked up on their frequency of dysregulation and that's your programming now. So the way we reconfigure that is by sitting with people who have spent time regulating their nervous system. That's why Elon and I can stream big energy because there's a, we've done years and years and years of co-regulation practices. And so there's a lot more spaciousness and energy in our fields. And so when you're around our field, we can help you track your system, point at awareness and help you start regulating your nervous system. And then you'll see the mind is, oh, goodness, it's like the peace, the exhale, the sigh that you've been looking for your entire life. And when you get a taste of it, you're like, oh, I'll do this forever. Mm -hmm. And it keeps getting better and better because the more, more glimpse, the more times you glimpse awareness, the stronger it gets. It, be it becomes the way you view the world instead of through your patterns and protectors and defensive strategies. And you literally become your own little walking Buddha who's healing themselves all the time. And it's not just you, you're healing, you're healing lineage, you're healing your ancestry, you're healing things that are happening in our society. Because every single person that becomes aware of this, when you walk out into the world, you transmit that ground, you transmit that safety. Just like a smile in the street or a cough or a yawn is infectious when other people see it. It's the same thing with energy, even more so. I'll leave it at that guys again if you want to check it out go go learn about our programs soulsandseekers.com forward slash messenger that will take you into a, a messenger conversation with a consultant there's a little bit of automation there in the beginning so if it, it is conf you know it clunks for you or you know you have some questions don't worry about that but every single one of those conversations is assigned to one of our senior consultants our consultants are not just people hucking programs these are people who've done this work now for many, many years, they're embodied representations of this work. So you can get it directly from them. There are people in this community that are happy to get on the phone with you and talk to you about their experiences. You can go to our websites and look at the hundreds of testimonials written in videos that we have. We guarantee this work. You do level one, we guarantee. In fact, if for whatever reason you do our level one work in the first seven weeks, you don't have the breakthrough you came for, we will literally coach you in perpetuity forever and for free until you get the breakthrough that you came here for. We're that sure that this work is gonna work for you. So please take advantage of that. Please go have a conversation with them and please find out if this work is for you. We're very, very excited to support you. We look forward to some of you guys becoming part of our community. With that said, we love you very much. All the best to you and your family. Thank you for your awareness and time today. And we will see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Everybody. Peace.